In this video, we'll go over some of the worst dungeons from World of Warcraft's history. Starting off at number 10, we have a more contentious pick, Halls of Reflection from Wrath of the Lich King. Now, Halls of Reflection is actually a pretty well-loved dungeon. However, only for the last third of the dungeon. The first two-thirds of the dungeon comprises of fighting eight waves of adds, huddled into a corner because that was the most efficient way to AoE them all down. Basically, once you started the fight, there were a couple of cool RP dialogues which you had to wait through every time you did the dungeon. Then, once the ghost adds spawned, a couple of them were ranged characters which can't be interrupted. So, the best way to AoE them all down was to hide in a little corner which provided line of sight, and force the ranged adds to run all the way into a neat little pile, so that Wrath players could do what they do best and just AoE down everything. Wrath AoE was something else. Pretty much every single class had some form of really good AoE. It might have been one of the golden ages of AoE. Just one of the golden ages. I think the actual golden age was Cataclysm, but that's besides the point. So after spending more than half the dungeon huddled into a corner AoEing down adds, during waves 5 and 10, a boss would come out, which were both pretty straightforward and didn't require any brain power once you overgeared them. And once you were done with the slog that was killing adds, then you got to the cool part where you got to run away from the Lich King by killing more adds. Thematically, the last third of the dungeon is amazing, and this is what makes it some people's favorite dungeon of all time because of just how great that theme is. But mechanically speaking, you never interact with the Lich King. He's just the enraged timer, and you're just killing adds while you wait for Sylvanas or Jaina to break the ice walls. It's just another wave of adds. We don't actually fight a boss. And you win if you're able to kill the adds quick enough. So even the cool part of the dungeon is just more ad killing. Except at least you don't have a corner you can huddle into, so there's a little bit more thought into killing the adds which are coming towards you. Although because of how well loved this dungeon is on a whole, even if it is only for a small part of the dungeon, it's only at the number 10 spot on this list. And at number 9, we have the Sunken Temple. Now, just like the Halls of Reflection, the Temple of Atal Hakar actually has a lot of fans. The original version of the dungeon is gigantic. It had 10 bosses, multiple levels, secret rooms, and even a whole second floor which is dedicated to just one boss that you have to unlock by doing a puzzle. Then when it was revamped in Cataclysm, they cut out almost the entire dungeon, and turned it into a really small, simple, four main boss regular dungeon, which was obviously meant to be a much bigger place. So the original version of the dungeon has a lot of fond memories attached to it for many people, for probably the first time they ran it. Otherwise, it was incredibly confusing, which made it actually hated amongst a lot of players who don't like that type of dungeon. Especially since getting to the dungeon was akin to going through a maze, and the dungeon itself wasn't much easier to navigate. So if you like exploratory D&D style dungeons, then the Temple of Atal Hakar really fits that niche. But hey, a non-max level dungeon doesn't need to be ran more than once, so it probably works for Sunken Temple. And then the revamped version of it wasn't very well liked, because they essentially just removed two thirds of it and didn't really do much else. So while the original version of the dungeon was only disliked if you had to run it more than once, or for just the players who didn't like being lost all the time, the revamped version isn't liked because they tried to make it too streamlined. It's impossible to get lost in the new one, when compared to the older version of itself. Although a lot of people did like how exploratory the dungeon was in its original form, so it only gets a low spot on this list. And at number 8, we have the Temple of Seth Rallis. This was a dungeon BFA which had an entire phase where you're slowly trying to move orbs from one area of the room to the eyeballs at the end of the room so that you can progress to the final boss. However, in order to move the orbs, you need to kill adds to clear a path, but the adds endlessly respawn to the point where they don't grant any experience or completion towards the added bonus and Mythic Plus, and there's a couple of adds in the room who can steal the ball from you and take it back. So it was just a slog of trying to complete this little gimmicky puzzle, which just grinds the dungeon to a halt as you endlessly AoE adds that don't matter. Then when you get to the final boss, you have a healer challenge, where while the rest of the party deals with adds, you have to make sure to heal up the boss if you're the healer, which will end the fight once she's healed up to full health. And generally, healer-centric bosses are pretty fun in raids, speaking as a healer myself, so them attempting this in a dungeon seems like it would have been a pretty decent idea. Except for the fact that dungeons only have a single healer. So the entire boss relies on your healer being able to pump out massive HPS, while also keeping the party alive who are constantly taking damage during the burst windows that you're allowed to heal the boss. Usually with other mechanics, you have three DPS to share responsibilities as special mechanics. This one is just all on one lone person who's trying to get up as much HPS as possible while also doing their job like normal. And you know what? 
Not all healers can pump out burst heals. Whenever I had to run this dungeon as my Discipline Priest main, I would always swap over to my lesser used Holy spec, just because it was 10 times easier to heal the final boss as Holy, even though I had no experience with that spec. There's a reason they haven't done healer only final bosses in future dungeons, as those kind of only work when there's more than one healer. It's a neat idea, but man does it not work out well in Mythic Plus dungeons. And at number 7 we have the Halls of Stone. This was a dungeon from Wrath of the Lich King, which on a whole is a pretty normal dungeon as far as Wrath of the Lich King dungeons go. It only has 4 bosses, it's a pretty small instance so there's no getting lost, and you can AoE down everything pretty easily. However, one of the bosses, or I guess encounters, called the Tribunal of the Ages, is basically a glorified ad wave fight. You talk to Bran who will trigger an event where you just fight ads which come to your room eventually, similar to the Halls of Reflection. You DPS waves of ads and at the end of the wave of ads, you get rewarded with a little bit of RP dialogue and then a chest which gives you some gear. Which all in all isn't that bad, it's just when you want to run through a dungeon quickly, getting completely stonewalled by a fight which has timers on how fast you're allowed to kill things really slows things down, especially since just killing ads for an entire boss fight is kind of boring without anything else going on. And at number 6 we have No Morgan. This is a pretty low level dungeon and is one of the first big exploratory dungeons you can do while leveling up. If you wish to do this in classic versions of the game, as a horde character, you have to complete a small quest first which allows you to teleport to the entrance of the dungeon, that way you're not killed by a whole bunch of alliance mobs on the way there. Although the quest is only available in Orgrimmar and not at the actual teleporter's location. And the quest is also not shareable. So you have to have all of your horde low level members run over to Orgrimmar, pick up the two quests in sequence, then run back to the teleporter's location on the other side of the world, that way you can then use the teleporter to get into the entrance of Nomergon. There also wasn't really good quests to do inside the dungeon, some of the progression was locked behind things you had to do out in the open world, and it was too easy to just pull an unkillable amount of ants. If you got too close to some of the ledges, you might pull a pack from a different level. If you had a character with a pet class and you tried to jump down one of the ledges and they forgot to dismiss that pet, then they would pull half the entire dungeon to your location. Seeing as it was a low level dungeon, most people were not super familiar with their classes yet, and didn't know their pet could not teleport down with them. So it was a very easy and common mistake to make. So basically, the place is just really easy to wipe in. And rewards not being super worth it since it's just for a level up gear. And for max level players who did want gear from this place, these concerns weren't really that big of a deal. And at number 5 we have the escape from Durnhold Keep. This entire dungeon is basically an escort quest. Where you go in and free thrall, then protect him from adds and the occasional boss while he slowly walks to the other side of the map occasionally stopping interacting with things and having some RP dialogue. From a lore point of view, the dungeon is actually excellent. I'm a big fan of the Caverns of Time dungeons because they allow you to see big moments in lore without having to scour the internet for books and sources for what happened. However, they rarely work out well in practice as an actual gameplay element. So while I appreciate them for the lore they provide, the gameplay experience is usually pretty lacking. And at number 4 we have the Violet Hold and the Assault on the Violet Hold. Basically, the Wrath and Legion version. The Violet Hold is going into a prison in order to basically have a boss fight gauntlet, where you fight waves of adds in between bosses. Now, the idea behind just fighting a whole bunch of unique bosses sounds pretty good. In a Violet Hold style dungeon, you could basically create whatever bosses you wanted without having to think about what would fit with whatever instance it's in and be as creative as you want. Although, they don't really do that in the Violet Holds. Most of them are just copy-pasted bosses with nothing super unique about their mechanics. Also, there's just a ton of waiting in between each boss since you can't actually speed up the portals that spit out ads. And because there's really no way to speed up the dungeon, and Legion when they remade the dungeon, they left it out of the Mythic Plus dungeons because the way the dungeon works just doesn't lend well to being able to speedily run it. An easy way to fix the dungeon would be to just allow you to spawn the bosses immediately instead of having to wait for them to allow you to fight them. But I guess that would make the dungeon too fast, which is bad for some reason. In at number 3 we have the Black Morass. Now the Black Morass is one of the first ever Caverns of Time dungeons, where you go back in time in order to help Medivh open the Dark Portal. Again, from a lore perspective, it's neat to actually see important events happen before your eyes. And they should definitely have more events like the Black Morass and Durnhold Keep. Just probably not as dungeons. Because in this one, it's another glorified waiting around fight, which combines the best aspects of the Violet Hold and the Halls of Reflection, 
where you fight waves of ads but have to wait for those waves of ads and there's no way to really speed up the process. Also, when you run around, you randomly aggro alligators, which never let your healers drink, since they can't leave combat, which means you can perpetually out of mana. And also, since this was released in the Burning Crusade, in addition to mana just being a much bigger deal back then, you would also get dismounted if you swam even a little bit in the water. And there were a lot of small puddles, so if you were on a small race or just a small mount, you would have to swerve around the puddle so that you wouldn't get dismounted. And at number two, we have the Oculus. Now, I remember back in Wrath of the Lich King, when they first added the Dungeon Finder, if I was ever randomly given the Oculus, more than half the time the entire group would just disband at the start. You know a dungeon is bad when everybody leaves immediately, which would also happen when I ran Halls of Reflection, funny enough, even though I kind of like that dungeon. Now, the reason people didn't like the Oculus was because of the vehicle mechanics. Wrath of the Lich King went hard on vehicle mechanics and wanted to add them everywhere, and so this dungeon had a final fight, which was entirely done in the back of dragons, where you fly around the sky and fight off a bigger dragon with your little dragons that you're piloting, which have their own little action bars that allow you to heal, DPS, or tank. This idea sounds good in theory, but is kind of meh in practice, especially since the dungeon really wanted to give you a reason to use those dragons outside the final fight. So you had to fly around each of the platforms in order to kill the required amount of ads in order to unlock the final fight. Technically, nothing in the dungeon was overly difficult. It just took way longer than it needed to with all the flying around and the amount of ads you had to kill. Plus, it's not really fun to use a vehicle in a final boss fight, which artificially makes it something you can't steamroll once you outgear it, before they allowed vehicles to scale with your gear, of course. And at number one, we have Tol Dagar. This was a dungeon from Battle for Azeroth expansion, which basically had you go into a prison in order to fight some prison employees and occasionally other prisoners. And while orchestrating a prison break seems like a neat idea, the big problem with this dungeon was just the massive amount of bugs it had, which were never really fixed all the way until the end of the expansion. You see, the dungeon had multiple levels, but there wasn't really enough physical room between them. So it was entirely possible and common for some of your AoE abilities to just accidentally pull a group of mobs on a different level, who would then run down and attack you. When they added in corruption at the end of the expansion, one of those corruption abilities summoned a giant laser beam from the sky which would attack everything and almost certainly pull any mobs that were in its path in the above rooms. During the middle of the expansion when they had the specific seasonal affixes that spawned one of Ajar's minions, one of the best ways to deal with them was just to constantly push them back, which if done in Toldagar, would coincidentally constantly pull a whole bunch of other ads in the other rooms, since in addition to being able to pull ads and floors above you, Sometimes you could just pull mobs in other rooms adjacent to you through the walls on the same level. Now, the bosses inside the dungeon were completely fine. All of them were excellent boss fights with no big problems. It was entirely everything else about the dungeon that was a drag. It was probably one of the most avoided dungeons on any Mythic Plus that people would only do begrudgingly if they absolutely had to, and that's about it. 